Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Day 31 with the mining rig. As you know, it started off with only two video cards and that was all we were supposed to do. And well, you know we got carried away. Got five video cards going, put in a rig frame, updated power supplies and all kinds of stuff. So let's check it out. So we got a lot of things to talk about today. We're going to get some uh, rig updates, complexities in making the frame. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some power saving things that we did, which are pretty good and important in our profitability. We're going to look at uh, other things that you can do as far as mining pools and coins to mine, including something that happened today, which is pretty crazy. And then, of course, we'll have our little financial review by looking at the spreadsheet and seeing where everything stands. So without further ado, let's check out first what's happening with Bitcoin. It's uh, pretty nuts. Bitcoin shattered the $7,000 barrier, went up to around 7,300 or so, and uh, came down with a little bit of a correction. It's at about 7,012, as you can see on the screen. Unfortunately, the number goes up and down, you know, every few minutes. So I think it was just under 7,000 a little while ago in the 6,900s, went back up again. And so uh, it's, you know, going up and down, but staying in that higher side. And who knows what's going to happen with it. Unfortunately for the mining rig, uh, we're not getting to mine Bitcoin. We're only mining Ethereum, and Ethereum just can't seem to hang on to those high numbers. We peaked out in the uh, in the higher numbers of about a week ago, and uh, you can see here 309. We actually went above that. I guess I got to go back a month. There we go. We hit those 340s, and so you know they hit the 340s, and then they just took a nosedive, came up a little, you know, here. But bottom line is they're just not holding on. Uh, to a value and then you know continuing that value forward and for mining that's that's hurting us a little bit considering we're doing GPU mining so let's get into the frame and see how that part of the process of the build went so there's the basic frame that we were building we ran into a little snag using some L brackets over here to support this bar for the video cards we used an epoxy that said it would handle 3200 pounds of strength and of course it didn't handle about three pounds of strength, so that was a fail. On the next step, we basically use some binding posts, which are a little bit fancier than a nut and a bolt, and we screwed on these L brackets. So let's get rid of that. And let's take a look at some of the things we did just before dropping everything into the frame. We use this nice thick plastic to mount the motherboard on. That allowed us to have a surface that wasn't on the wood and, of course, some airspace uh, for the motherboard. That way we wouldn't have any issues with it. There are some airspace, as you could see. And we didn't get to pick up a mining motherboard because we were looking for the 19 GPU motherboard from ASUS, and they've been a little bit tough to get recently. I think they're going to be out in the next couple of weeks. There'll be some more in circulation. So now that we've showed you a couple of these pictures, we did get more video cards as the process went along. And as you can see here, we were testing risers out on top of a desk. And of course they were connected to the PC, uh, but that was our way of ensuring that the risers worked. And every couple of days we would end up getting another video card that we picked up on eBay. So you can see the uh, MSI armor cards over here. You can see the uh, MSI gaming cards. And in the back here, an MSI reference card. Uh, and we just threw a couple of extra fans on there just to keep the uh, airflow moving and try to keep the temperatures uh, lower since they got pretty hot while we were doing mining. And as you can see back there, that kilowatt showing 866 watts of power, which was pretty crazy. Close those out. And finally, we're going to go and check out the frame. So this is again in stages. Here's the frame with just some random fans. We've got some new ones that were coming in and we're still using two individual power supplies. So we didn't quite get to the point where we stuck the HP uh, in there, but by doing that, it allowed us to take some measurements and do a fair comparison of using a bronze 80 plus power supply and then using an HP server power supply that was, uh, I believe this particular one was gold. And we did order a platinum one, which is gonna come in hopefully in the next few days. And we're gonna bench that one as well and see how it works. So the frame, you know, was coming along. As you can see there, it looks almost like it's riveted 
onto the frame for that crossbar, but then the L brackets failed us again, and they started to bend too easily, and truthfully, there was only about 30 pounds of pressure here. So temporary measure number one, throw some little bungee cords on there, and just make sure that there's no way it's gonna fall or bend down so low that the video cards may be compromised. The other thing we did is we basically cable tied the video cards onto the frame, and even the fans, as you can see back here, are cable tied. It's not supposed to be some you know crazy fancy rig, and this is just you know another step in the rig growing. Here's another shot showing the rig with a couple more days under its belt. And as you can see, we've got uh, some nice fans there that had about 42 CFMs worth of airflow. They made a difference of about one to two degrees, depending on the video card, for keeping everything cooler, which is nice. And really, they're just there to displace the air that's hot around the card and push it away. So that was, you know, a big improvement. Again, we're still here with the uh, base power supplies. And I'll walk you through some video footage showing the mining rig pretty well assembled. You can see uh, that we're tracking the power at about 845 as an average. Been a couple weeks running at that number, so uh, we have a good baseline for our test when we swap out the power supply. And as you can witness, not only did we make several changes in the regular PC cases we were using this, but several changes are going to happen in the rig because we're trying to refine the process. Here you can see the 450 watt 80 plus bronze power supply, which isn't doing too much. And over there is a PC cooling, which is actually Corsair. I think that one might be gold, but I'm going to shoot with bronze just for sake of conversation. There's that bungee cord, unfortunately, holding up those uh, side rails for the video cards, which is kind of disappointing as far as a design standpoint. So now that we have our baseline for the mining rig. So the next improvement we did was put in the HP server power supply. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, the power supply is going across the front. Not how we're going to keep it in the long term, just for presentation purposes. We have it up front. As you can see, we've got this uh, breakout board which allows us to make the 8-pin cables go to the video cards. So that board is pretty invaluable when you're trying to make that connection because it's got just a, a basic slot and would never work in any other capacity except for on an HP server. Got a light up front on the back. Not too great of a switch, mainly because that switch is right where you've got some wires around it. Switch is right here. And uh, you touch those wires, I don't want to know what happens. So we're still running our... Uh, desktop power supply to run the motherboard and the um, riser cards and then we're running all the video cards on the HP power supply so it should be a decent amount of savings going from a bronze to a gold and we've actually got a platinum uh, power supply on order and we're gonna do a, another follow-up video to see how that does and see exactly how much savings there'll be on the rig here we've got uh, two MSI gaming video cards, two MSI armor cards, and uh, there's a reference card in there in the middle. Uh, that's my least favorite of them just because of the amount of heat it has. Uh, but I do like the idea of pushing the heat out of the back of the card and not into the side where the rig is. As you can see, our power consumption has gone down a lot where I'm going to say average 800. While it does drop down a little bit below the 800, and maybe goes to about 805. Bottom line is at 800, we save 45 watts, which is a positive thing. We'll see about uh, what the Platinum does, and we'll probably look at getting another power supply to run the motherboard and make sure that we get something that's either gold or platinum uh, and compare it, because I'm not sure what that particular power supply is. Those are just power supplies we had here in the office. So let's take a look at a couple of these uh, quick picks. We finally got rid of the bungee cords. We said since cable ties are so useful for everything we've done and we didn't really want to get too crazy, we just replaced those bungee cords with cable ties there. We moved the position of the motherboard and power supply. That way it would be more logical for distributing the cables. Here you get the side view of the risers on the motherboard. And uh, you, know, you can see the hard drive cable going back there. We just used an SSD drive that we had uh, to make things go a little faster since we rebooted about a million times. We'll go over that later. And then over on the other side where we've got the HP power supply, you can see we've kind of put it closer to the middle and uh, the wires are going up trying to support the video cards 
a little bit closer. It did get kind of tight. These are, I think, 21, 22 inch cables. So it didn't have the greatest amount of room uh, or extra length, I should say, to reach uh, to the top. So the very end cards probably got a little bit more pull than we would like. But the bottom line is we've got the, you know, the rig running. Everything is pretty stable and that's really all that matters. Now, while we're looking at the uh, still picture here, let me review these video cards and let's get an early opinion on which is my favorite. We did buy MSI across the board. They seem to use some higher end capacity with longer life expectancy components. And therefore, it seemed like the logical card to buy since you know you're going to run these things 24 hours a day. Now, on the left side of it here, we've got these MSI armors. And actually, this one right here happens to be an RX 470. We didn't really think it was going to be as slow as it's been. And uh, for some reason, it's getting almost 10 mega hash less than the 480s are. So something we're going to have to do a little more research in which of course is the typical thing going on with this is that you're always tweaking, always enhancing and so on. Then you've got the uh, other RX 480, or I should say the RX 480, which is the other armor. And that card has been running well, getting about 28 mega hash, very consistent, no real issues with that card. Then in the middle here, we have that Radeon reference card. That card has been running surprisingly well. I think it gets about 26 mega hash. Um, so not quite as fast as the others, but um, the one thing that's been frustrating is that little fan that blows all the hot air through the back vents down here um, it does a pretty good job, but the card stays hot. And so it's significantly hotter than the other cards in the machine and probably long term won't be great to, to run it. We did take the shroud off of the card and try to make it run a little bit cooler but it actually made it worse. And I think that's because the fan needs the shroud to have that pressure to blow the air out the back. And then on the right here, I think you could tell from the picture, uh, these two MSI gaming cards, they're monsters. And what I mean by that is they're huge in comparison to the armor cards. Now the armor has better cooling uh, materials here. It's got a bigger heat sink than what this uh, reference card had. And it's got a, a pipe or two that you can see coming out of the top. But on the gaming card, they had more pipes and a huge heat sink. So these ran considerably cooler than the rest of them did. So as an example, the two armor cards ran at about 55 to 59 degrees when they were running hot and for a long period of time. And these two gaming cards ran between 46 and 48. So that's a pretty significant difference uh, in the sense of something that you're running for a long time. It's going to heat up the room. So you've got to also cool the area a little bit more. And uh, at the same time, for the life of the actual GPU, I think it's going to be much better to run at that cooler temperature. We're running the fans at around 65% to help keep them cool. And then, of course, those four fans we talked about in the back with the high CFM uh, to also blow that hot air out. Now, in this particular frame, we could get the 120s in and put four across. If we would have put 140 fans in there, then I'd only be able to put three. So we went with the four for this frame. But I think on the next frame, you know, we're going to see if we can use the bigger fans, hoping for more airflow. All right, so let's talk about some of the work involved, and this is definitely part of the frustration. Um, now, I'm not mining with simple mining right at the moment, so we'll, we'll look at that uh, shortly. But as you can see here, 716 reboots. Now, as you can imagine, the system booting up with five video cards takes some time to reboot, and unfortunately, uh, sometimes you're just reloading the miner software, and so that doesn't even count as a reboot. Um, but just many, many different configuration changes, issues where one video card is not being seen one time, then it's another video card, moving the video cards around, changing the riser cards. Sometimes it liked one card in slot two and not another card in slot two. Then you would have it running for three days that way. Then it decided it didn't like that card anymore and you had to keep manipulating it. So right now I can't be sure how much of it is related to the motherboard, 
being maybe a few years old, even though I don't think that's the case. I have read online that other people said they thought the same thing, bought a mining rig specific motherboard and it didn't help. But I definitely want to see, you know, that mining expert from ASUS and use that as the uh, basis for finding out how much of this flakiness is maybe because of the risers, maybe the technology of reading in a bunch of GPUs at once. I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, 716 times, that's that's pretty nuts. And at the same time, um, some of those efforts were to change configuration just at the software level. Hey, change this parameter, reboot. Um, something didn't work, reboot. And I mean, just literally hours of work. Now, once you get it down to a science, then this will become less time consuming. But initially, when you're trying to experiment with everything, it takes a lot of time. Now, some of the other experiments we did were revolving around some different pools, which I know we spoke about briefly last time, and even some different coins because of profitability on that day. So we'll take a quick look here. As you can see, we, we did let it run over the past, uh, I'll say 20 some odd hours, 18 hours right here. And it was running pretty consistent, consistently here. This is all doing Ethereum on Ethermine. This did well. But this little outage here, this is goofing around, changing settings, uh, different issues that you ar that arise from, you know, kind of tweaking it and trying to improve the hash rate, lower the power, and things of that nature. So again, it's a it's a complicated thing. So Ethermine was one of our better Ethereum pools, and and we did pretty good with it. And we'll just grab this spreadsheet real quick, which you know is always the financial fun. Uh, and I'm just going to open up the tracking tab and yes again the numbers have changed so as we spoke about uh, you know before things changed on the rig from day to day so as an example here we added a video card then here we added another video card then here another video card and I guess we didn't document the last one but there's five cards in the rig as you saw and so that's going to affect these older numbers and you can see the dollar values here are much lower than when we start getting these cards in. And even though these numbers are pretty high right here, $5 ranges, when we're playing with the cards, changing the type of coin that we're mining and things of that nature, then we're affecting the results. Uh, what we did here is we added Ethereum and everything here is about Ethereum. And we also started mining some Expanse just to check it out, as you can see here. And some of the reasons that we were mining Expanse was not only was it at the top of the charts, and when I say top, if it's in top three, I, I consider that you know a coin that may be worth it. But mainly, if that coin uh, is higher up and paying relatively the same as Ethereum, and you're getting, let's say, eight coin reward versus five, then when you're mining, you're getting more coins rather than the fraction of a coin, which we spoke about last time. And so in this case, you have the opportunity that if this coin goes up, you're going to have a higher profit margin. Let's say it goes up a dollar for every coin you have. If Ethereum does that, you're at such a fraction, it might be a penny versus if this coin goes up a dollar, you get a dollar. Um, so we wanted to play with that, but we didn't have a lot of success mining it with simple mining. And so these numbers reflect some of the frustration um, with it and that we didn't mine that much. Uh, what it looks like we've got here is a quarter of a coin here and uh, just over half a coin here because we did you know a couple of trials here on two different mining pools uh, this one's mining pool is the name of it and this one's exp mine so we still had to track the money because we didn't want to show the numbers off by that much and then today and yesterday after we did the power supply um, test and change you'll see this line we mined most of the evening and today up until about $3.27. And again, we stopped it. But in this case, we stopped it for an excellent reason. And I made a quick video earlier today and posted it just so people that are mining would actually take a, a look at it and maybe consider changing what they're doing. Now, I'm hoping that these numbers haven't changed too much. Uh, here we go. Since earlier... So this is what to mine. I'm sure you guys have seen it. If not, you know, I'm going to put a link down below. 
You go to this site, you put in the amount of video cards you have, and uh, you can pick the different types of algorithms that you'd like to mine. It picks all of them for you. And then based on the cards that you have, you click calculate, and it'll come up and tell you what are the best coins. Now in general, Ethereum's usually number one, but it's not uncommon for Ethereum to fall to number two and sometimes number three. And so uh, there's nothing surprising there, but that range is somewhere like you can see here, the next you know two coins, 603 to 644. That's the kind of discrepancy we're used to seeing. At some point today, um, and this has been since earlier today, a uh, nice hash mining kryptonite jumped through the roof. I think it might have broken $15 a day based on the numbers. So if you see this 644 and you can get 1379, you stop mining Ethereum, you throw nice hash onto the computer and you start mining from nice hash. I'm just going to hit refresh to see if that number changed at all. And look at that, it's even higher. It's 1530 versus Ethereum at 656. So you're talking crazy numbers, more than double what you could get from mining Ethereum. And this is one of the things that I'm more aware of, and you guys should pay attention to, is you've got to constantly be moving around with what the flow is. I wouldn't jump because something's, you know, like if this Zencash is 761 and you're mining uh, Carbon Wayne, Wainick, I don't even know how to say that. I hadn't even seen that coin before. Uh, for this eight cents difference, it's not worth jumping, especially if you're mining Ethereum and you believe in that particular coin. If in fact Sumo Coin is your favorite and you got this, you know, guy at 753 and 674, you've got to make the call. Is it worth that difference in price and just, you know, mine Sumo Coin, or do I mine the one that's getting me more profit and then go buy the Sumo Coin? So anyway, in this case, 1530, there's no argument. When you're over double, you're not going to mine Ethereum. So let's take a quick look at that. Get that thing out of the way. And I'm going to remote over to this Windows box. So in this case, uh, we ended up having to mine with NiceHash on Windows. It was going to take a little bit longer to set it up under Linux. And so we just wanted to go quickly and take advantage of it. But unfortunately, even though Windows saw all five video cards, NiceHash wouldn't take advantage of all five. And so, uh, you know, we said, all right, we're not going to fight it because even at four video cards, we're here, according to this, it says 928. And online, I think it shows a little bit higher as to actually what we're mining. Um, but when you're getting that much of a difference, even that, you know, fifth video card not being recognized isn't a factor. We're still doing much better than mining Ethereum. So that's been running uh, for part of the day. We did have some issues, you know, having to go set this up real quick. But other than that, you know, we're going to let this run as long as it's taking these crazy numbers and uh, and mining us uh, bigger dollars for return, which of course means we're going to buy more video cards. So that's what made us change today as far as the uh, mining that we were doing, both uh, on Ethereum and then a little bit on Expanse which, uh, like I said, didn't work out too much. And I think we're going to have to not rely on simple mining that much unless we're doing something that's straightforward like Ethereum uh, or maybe one or two other coins. I think we're going to have to build a, a Linux box or figure out how to run it better under Windows to, when these types of opportunities come up, take better advantage of them. Uh, so quickly looking at the numbers, so far in these past uh, 30 days or 31 days, you know, we can see where our best day is, which is right here around the 26th, where we collected the most Ethereum. Um, and then in this particular column, the expanse, of course, it's only two days. That's not really helping us. And our most profitable days are right here. As you can see, the actual numbers just updated for the cost of Ethereum. Uh, but here's our, our dollar number uh, referencing the amount of coin. And you can see, you know, $5 seems to be a good day, 560. So hopefully we can try to maybe leave the rig running a few more days continuously without touching it. And when I say continuously, it's not that we've ever turned it off, but it might have crashed. We might have played with something and had it offline for three, four, five hours, because there's definitely times that it's just a frustrating situation to get it working. But we, we want to get to the point where we can run the rig and not touch it. And if we go over here under uh, just the statistics, 
we added some numbers here to show how much we've invested into the rig. Now at the beginning we bought two video cards and that wasn't a big deal. But we're at five video cards now. We've got some risers. We've got some components to actually build the uh, frame for it. And there's probably a few more things that we haven't added in, but we'll add them in slowly. And those, of course, brought up our cost to $1,300. Now, uh, of course, there's more video cards on the way. There's some special riser cards to maybe add slots to the motherboard by putting three risers in one slot. And that'll help us until we can get our hands on an ASUS 19 GPU uh, motherboard. Uh, so here we go with the numbers. Uh, it looks like uh, it's going to take, if we look at just the calculated gross, let's put it actually on net. And somehow it looks like it's the same number. So it's going to take us until um, month seven to break even. And uh, as you can see here, in this month, we expected this to happen where we had one video card, then two video cards, and so on. So it says that we're only at 41% of the target, and that's fine. I mean, that's what we're expecting it to be. Oh, I see what happened with the numbers. That's why the return was so quick. This number was changed for a test. Right now we're at 800. That's another thing. We're at 800 watts, even though the majority of the month we might have run under 850. Um, you know, we didn't make the spreadsheet that crazy to start subcalculating each fraction of a month. Uh, so putting in that 800 brings our electrical costs up to $70 a month, which is pretty crazy. Might be a little bit less, I think it's 0.11, but we went to 0.12 to make sure there's no overages during peak times where they charge a surcharge for power. I'm just gonna stick that back. And then the other thing that we said we were gonna do is we'll probably have to take away this fee because the fees are actually taken out before we see the money when we get it from mining. So whatever numbers we're seeing in the mining calculations back here, those are after the two fees. One being the Claymore fee, which the software does mining on its own. And then the other one being the pool fee, which they're not showing you how much you could have had, they're showing you how much you have after the pool fee. So that's probably a number that uh, we'll have to take away. And here was more realistic, 10 months. Now, if this was Bitcoin, this would be going you know, through the roof as far as numbers and the payback would be much shorter because the value of Bitcoin went up. And as you can see here, Ethereum is still low, 290. So we got to hope that uh, Ethereum keeps going up in price or that we're mining some of these alternative coins. And we come down here, we looked at if we average this as a two year cost and we hope that in the second year we can make it and have this consistent profit, that we would profit $1,800 uh, at the end of that cycle. Now, the other thing is we'll have the video cards at the end of that cycle, and they'll have some kind of value that can be put back into this. So right now, this 140% profit is sounding pretty good, and, and I'm real happy with how it's turning out. Um, we'll, we'll figure out a way also to add into these numbers whatever we're mining on um, NiceHash. I have a feeling that uh, we're not going to really know and care what they're mining we're just going to take the Bitcoin value because when you mine with NiceHash, they convert whatever it is that you're mining into Bitcoin. So we'll just put the Bitcoin value here. And being said that Bitcoin is going up in value, maybe it's better that we're getting the Bitcoin right this moment uh, automatically from them because then the Bitcoin can go up in price and that'll be another area of profit for the mining. So I think that's pretty much all we can talk about. Uh, with the mining rig today. It's been a good experience, very frustrating one because of all the technical issues. And when I say technical issues, they don't make sense. They're not logical. They do not, um, it's not as simple as saying, oh, logically, you know, if video card two isn't being seen, it must not be plugged in. It must not have power. It must be missing something. And really that's not it. And you could maybe have one video card boot uh, 20 times and not complain. And then all of a sudden you can't get that video card to be seen by the operating system for a day. And your only choice is to maybe change the order of the video cards again and hope that it works. So the frustration level is definitely there, but the goal of seeing if it's profitable is coming a little bit more to light. We are seeing the profit in it. 
we are seeing the you know long-term value of it but we've got to keep working on improving the rig trying to get uh, it more efficient trying to get the video cards to actually be utilized a little bit better uh, that reduction in power would be great and uh, you know in the end it's all about getting those coins and holding on to them and hopefully making some money in the long run having said that I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you listening through the whole thing. This was a pretty long video. And uh, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. Please leave any comments or questions that you might have down below. And uh, also hit subscribe. That way you can see when our other videos are coming out. We've come out with some different videos uh, in the past where we talked about uh, the cloud mining, which is pretty interesting. Some of it not as profitable as others, such as Bitcoin. And uh, we came out with some videos just updating different things in cryptocurrency. So give us that thumbs up before you go away and I'll catch you on the next time.